I just want to show you guys kind of how we keep them and what you do. Rinse them off and get all the bugs off of them. And if you don't have anything down there, there's going to be a pool of water on the bottom of this. And if these bottom layer of mushrooms sit in that pool of water, they're going to get soggy and slimy and not really keep. So we'll put something dry down on the bottom and then I'll pile my mushrooms in there. And then on top of them, I don't want my mushrooms drying out on them dry paper towel. So I'll moisten another paper towel, drape it over the top of them, put the lid on them and pop them in the fridge. You'll get, I'd say, no more than 10 days out of them, or at least I can't. If you know how to get more than 10 days out of a fresh mushroom, please let me know. I'd love to know how, but I can't. These are on probably day 7 or 8, and, and they're doing good. And, and when I'm cooking them, I'll go through there, and I'll kind of I'll kind of sift them out. You know, like, oh, this one looks old, this one looks old, this one looks old. Because it, it doesn't matter, you know, really how old they are since you picked them. It's just the condition of the mushroom itself. I can go pick a mushroom today and it, and it be expired and still in the ground and these will be fresher and they've been in my fridge eight days. It's not necessarily when you picked them from, it's just how, how fresh they are. The texture, how moist they are, how firm they are, when they start drying out, when you pick them fresh and they start drying out, they start getting brittle. I just barely rub my fingers on that and she's going to crumble away. It's because it was picked fresh but it, it's, it's starting to age in my fridge so we're going to cook them up with some uh, bacon grease. I'm just going to slice them up so they lay flat in the pan, lather it up with some bacon grease in there, cook them probably about 15 minutes, pretty low and slow, and I, I will egg wash them and I will flour them. I just kind of want to show you how, how we keep them. You know, some people keep them in salt water, some people don't rinse them and put them straight in the fridge, some people keep them in paper sacks. I don't know the best way, but I've been, I've been picking morels for quite a few years now, probably 10, going on 10, 12 years. And this is what works for me and what keeps them the longest. You know, we've probably filled up this container right here, I don't know, three, four, five times a season. And some of these might be the oldest ones, some of them the youngest ones, but, you know, like I said, I just go by freshness. Which ones are the freshest? And I just kind of sort them out like that and go from there. But So when I cut it, you can almost tell it's ready to go because it's just it's breaking apart on me. It's peeling out. You know, when they're, see, like that. My knife sharp and she's still wanting to break on me and crumble up so it's it's time. And if I see something like this in there, a little bit of brown or you know, discoloration like that, sometimes I'll scrape it out if it's a big old spot like but on this piece, the outside looks good, the inside just got a little bit of brown in there. I'm not gonna stress over that. By the time that bacon grease soaks in and the cabiner soaks in, you ain't gonna taste that little bit of, you know, flavor that that, that brown spot's gonna have in it. I've, I've ate it like that for years, it's never hurt me. I hope it doesn't hurt you, but I'm definitely not gonna throw that away because it's got a little bit of brown on it. No. Again, here's another one with some brown spots on it. And you can see a little bit of brown here, starting to brown here. And it is. It's time to cook it, but we've had so many. We've been so fortunate. We've we've picked so many. We've been able to share with all our friends and family. And you know, it's got a little brown on there. It's all right. It's not gonna hurt me none. You know, if my fish meat has worms in it, it's fine. I don't care. I'm gonna freeze it, kill the worms. I'm gonna cook it. I'm not just gonna waste it all. So, you know, if there's a little discoloration, or if there's some bugs on there, you know, it's out in the woods. It's out in nature. You know, these things we're picking them out of the wild. So. To me, I'd much rather have a couple bugs on there than be farm raised, pump full of pesticides and herbicides, and fungicides, and whatever. So it's, it, this is how it comes in nature, and, and it is what it is, and it's 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 a beautiful thing. It really is. This is getting very close to what I would consider expired. I probably looked over it when I was picking through the batch, you know, a week ago. It was probably expired a couple days ago for some reason. I, it looked okay from the outside, but when I cut it open, you can see the inside there. You're going to start to taste that. That's not going to taste as good. What I'll do is I'll probably take my knife and try to scrape that out and then nip the top off of it. It's still fine. It's still perfectly edible, but I will try to clean that up, and if I can, then I might discard that. If we're not going to eat them, then I would just assume leave them in the woods and let them spore out and help repopulate for next year. But you know, it's not near as brown. It smells good, it smells fresh, so 
there might be a slight bit of, t you know, not as fresh flavor in that, but it's, it's not enough for me to throw it out. I doubt anybody really picks up on it. This is what, that's a fresh one. You know, that's what the inside of it's looking like. Alright, time to get some eggs, get some flour. And you don't have to egg wash them either. A lot of times I've seen people, after you slice them up like that, they'll, they'll just drop them in a bowl of salt water. Any bugs that are left over, any little gnats or anything like that, they'll jump off of there. And then they just go straight from the salt water dip to, uh, to flour. You know, some people think that you can taste the morel better without the flour, which is probably true. You know, you don't have the eggs in there. But, you know, you don't always have a whole bunch of mushrooms to work with, so those eggs are like an additional filler, you know. If I, if I can use half a pound of mushrooms and four eggs, well, I can stretch that half a pound of mushrooms to maybe come out with a pound total weight, you know, after being cooked. Uh, mushrooms, eggs, flour, butter, baking grease, whatever you're, you know, cooking them in. Whereas if you just flour them, you know, you just go from salt water to flour to, to butter to baking grease, you know, you, you lose that, that egg weight, and so it takes more of them to fill you up, and it's just... You can't stretch it as far. So if you only get a couple, I would definitely egg them. If you get a whole bunch of them and you want to try it without eggs, it is good. It is good. The mushroom flavor will be stronger. If you want to add pepper or seasons or anything to your egg wash or to your flour, you can. That's fine. I, uh, I tend to add it to the finished product. When the grease is still hot, I pull it out of the pan, put it on my plate. That's when I like to add my seasonings. Um, you know, whenever, you, whenever you're cooking, the last thing that you season it with, when you go to eat it, it's going to be one of the first things you taste. So I'll hold off on seasoning. I think you lose a lot of flavor in your seasons if you, if you season it early. So, you know, I'll wait until I pull it off. I'm letting the grease drain off in my paper towel or, or whatever. And then I'll, I'll give it a sprinkle. We really like cabiners on this. I use cabiners on my fried back strap. I use cabiners on, you know, my morel mushrooms. It just, I don't know if the nostalgic aspect of it or like the memory side of it, like been eating cabiners on mushrooms for pretty much ever since I've been picking them and finding them. Or if it's just that good. I don't know. It might be something just with me, but it's good. You, you won't go wrong if you go putting cabiners on your fr fried mushrooms. You're not going to be mad at me. As soon as I get a mess I'm ready, I'll drop them in that bacon grease and I might do this process over again. It probably looks like I got two skillfuls now. So. Goodness gracious. Who, who, doesn't want, who doesn't want that big old fried golden goodness on their plate? Oh man. Hold that over the bag, and I'll just give it a little shaking. Little <whistles> and yeah, I took the breading nicely. That's that's how I want it to look. They might look differently by the time I get, you know, a skillet's worth breaded up. They might look a little different. The egg might bleed through the flour. The flour might get wet or or whatever. But I don't t I don't pull them out of there and drop them back in the flour again and get them looking just like that. I fry them. The flour's still there. It might be wet flour, but it's still flour. It's still going to fry it just the same. You know, when you fry it, it's going to cook that moisture out of there, and it's, it's going to fry. It's going to crisp up just fine. That's my first plate of morels. I'm going to drop the dang bacon grease in there. Plop it down like so. It looks like about a tablespoon to me. The viscosity of it's pretty thin, so I can tell it's, it's pretty hot. It's not real hot. I don't want it real hot either. You know, I don't want to just burn my flour up or whatever, so it's warm enough for me. about right right there so I mean guys if you're in the woods and there's nothing but oak trees you know what I look for is trees dirt and moisture that's it that's why I pick mushrooms trees dirt and moisture 
I want, you know, black, sandy, loamy, healthy, good dirt. And I want elms, ashes, and a lot of times sycamores, you know, around here. A lot, a lot of my good trees are sycamores, but elms and ashes, those just consistently produce mushrooms for me. I hear. Right along. I just make sure a little bit of bacon grease love gets soaked into every crack and cranny. And I love using butter. Man, I love cooking in butter. It's that's a great flavor, just like the bacon grease, but the bacon grease, it can handle the temps, especially if you're running gas and cast iron, which I wish I was on right now, but that's okay. But the bacon grease, you can heat it up, you can get it hot, it's not going to brown, it's not going to burn. I love frying them in butter, but it can get a little too hot, depending on the situation, so. The grease is hot, they're nice and tacky, greasy. Drain it up on that paper towel a little bit. Take my cavenders. Give them a little sprinkle here. Ain't nobody gonna be mad at you for doing that. I promise you. And yeah, it's got MSG in it. And MSG is freaking delicious. I've heard it's unhealthy. Healthy. I don't know. I don't care. Tastes good. It's good. You gotta separate them, honey. You're not giving these enough love. See how they're sticking like this? You gotta, you gotta separate that. Ooh I already know they're good because I've been eating them. I mean, it's more of mushroom fried in bacon grease with cavities on top. Oh yeah. Mm. I mean, that's really what like you look forward to in the springtime. Turkey goblin. Usually walleye biting at night. The night bite, you know, stick bait at night for walleye. And that right there. I mean, it's so fun to pick them because you think of that taste that I just tasted. And how freaking good it is. It's, it's, it's silly. I can go anywhere. I can take these things. Last night I went to a total stranger's house. It was like... We're eating the Mummerel mushrooms and he's busting out the moonshine and we're like best friends within two hours because of these right here because how incredibly special they are. Well, look at me. Look at the people. TJ just cooked me some morel mushrooms and this is the first time I'm trying them cooked like this in bacon fat instead of what we usually do which is butter. Um, and I'm going to see what I think. Here we go. Hmm. Yeah, that's really good. I like it. It, it almost gets a little um, crispier than the butter does. Really, really good. Yeah. Good. Look at this, you guys. Look at these mushrooms. And they're about to be done. <laughs> We're about to cook dinner. And, uh, salmon from Alaska. Yeah, we're going to have some salmon. We're not going to video that, unfortunately, but we're going to have some delicious salmon and some of these morels. And uh, I wish you could be here. I wish you could taste this and experience this and enjoy it. Um, but there's lots of woods out there. There's lots of morels up. I know. So. Can you, like, give the camera, like... <laughs> there's a little taste. Like feeding a little baby. Here you go. Have a little try of that. Oh damn, that's good though. Woo wee! Mmm. Oh, it's good. Okay, so these are done. We're about to say goodbye and uh, get our dinner going. But we wanted to share with y'all some of what we got this spring and some of how we like to cook it, which we're always learning. We're, you know, we want to try new things. We love cooking them with butter. We love now cooking them with bacon, which a friend or a uh, acquaintance TJ met yesterday showed him this and uh, it was really good so this is another thing to add to um, you know our little whatever and um whatever <laughs> shut up you talk I'm done <laughs> when you fry these with anybody you're friends at that point
or else you don't share them. Like, Give me them back. You're you're a dick. You share your mushrooms with somebody, all oh, your friends. You're you're good. That's just on granny. Not it. Oh, you didn't get it. They're good. good. Full of eggs back here in a windblown pocket.